Welcome to the latest edition of the Newman Motor. In previous, the most recent videos I've done, I've tried to straighten up the coil some. Now, this is another one of several videos where I try to straighten the coil more. Now, I've get, I've got it to uh, align where it would run without me having to fix it for hours on end. Right now, this machine has probably logged, accumulated over 20 hours since the last charge. Not continuous because since the last few videos this month, I have not recharged these batteries. Right now, I have 34 packs, each containing 8 AA rechargeable batteries. This meter over here is the analog meter. And it does not require any batteries to operate because it's not, it has no active screen. It has to light up. Uh, I recently recharged this, the, the rechargeable battery, 9 volt, that I have in this meter. Now, I am going to turn it on the 20 amp setting. Okay. This is the digital reading in the 20 amp setting. So after the, the, the decimal point, we have the tenth place and the one hundredth place of our current and amps, according to the digital meter. Now look at the analog meter. I'm going to get it into clear focus so I can make a point. Try to get it in focus. Again. Oh, it's harder than usual. Okay, there we go. Now, compare how easy it is to locate the bottom of the range when the needle goes to the, the lowest mark compared Compare that to your ability to measure the, um, the top of the range. Now, if you look at that, you can easily, you can, it's easier for you to check what the low is versus the high. Sometimes and sometimes not. Just a little bit. For people with a little bit slower eyes they can tell the difference because it will be easier to check the the low versus the high which means it spends a little bit more time on the low and since we see this going from below zero to above to above which mark 60 milliamp mark just a little bit. Um, well, what does this meter show? It shows a range between 0 .00 and 0 .04. So, if it's true that this analog meter spends more time on the low than the high, then it's reflected in this digital meter. Now, I have my same old twist tie set up. And I once again made the coils tighter. This time, the six coil on the top as well. I changed the bearings in the center a little bit because I had trouble uh, keeping it in the center. And so I fixed that. My commutator again. Now we can see it from here. And it's basically part of the ribbon cable wire stripped from its insulation wrapped around the twist tie. And the copper pipe is actually uh, jammed into a nut that was screwed onto the shaft fixed by a little bit of super glue. So that way 
it's strong enough to not slip and slide on the shaft, but not too thick um, for the conduct conducting current. I mean, the for the current to go from the shaft, which is connected to this commutator on this side, and go from there to the, the battery pack. So, here is the setup again. Now, after all these subsequent additions to the motor, I now have this result. Now, if I tilt the camera like that, it can compare to other videos I've had. So, right now, um, this motor average is at 120 RPM. But instead of just guessing for you, I'm going to measure this. Now, since the motor makes a little bit of sound, it's easy to do this. I'm going to try to do it right this time. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So, when I said it averages at 120 RPM, that's when the motor's commutator is adjusted accordingly. Right now, I do not want to mess with that right now. But you've seen in other videos where it ran 120 RPM and so forth. So if it's 20 revolutions every 10.8 seconds, what we do have here is we've got 111 RPM. Now I have situ I have setups where. Um, I've got this running at faster at 111 RPM, but the wind isn't as strong due to uh, improper uh, unalignment. But now we're going to demonstrate a little bit difference. Now, if I hold this back, this wind is actually stronger than in the previous video I have. It's much easier to hold this with two fingers without becoming unstable within a few seconds. Well, it said it was easier, I didn't say it was going to be. So, as you can see, all right, I want this to go back to 130 eventually with this many coils, but I'll have to get more batteries for that to be possible. Or I would have to attach a smaller fan, but that would defeat the purpose of having more coils. With the smaller fan, it was actually more efficient with two coils, not three or whatever. So, all right, we'll measure the voltage. Always have to do that. Okay, 264 volts. I'm shaking because of my one hand. So it shouldn't go. Thumb on the bottom of the camera. On the side. 264 volts. On the 100. No, the 1000 volt setting. Alright. A lot of chips on the magnets. 